All right, so we're going to be working on my 1992 Forte 2s. I have rebuilt the whole speaker, and I'm going to go over that in just a few minutes with what I have done. And we're going to be adding in the Kreitz Bandpass filters for the titanium mid-range squawker diaphragm replacement. All right, so this speaker does have the original driver. I did update the squawker with a titanium membrane, I'm sorry, titanium diaphragm. Got that from Simply Speakers. And then I do have the Bob Kreitz titanium diaphragm as well for the tweeter. And I have also upgraded the rear passive radiators as well. Got those from Klipsch. And it is the, I believe they're from the Forte 4s. All right, these are how the Kreitz bandpass filters come packaged. I'm going to go ahead and unpackage them here. They're pretty substantial product, actually. I, I was pretty surprised at just how big they are. Okay, so they do come with this added piece here that you have to remove prior to install. Just a little piece of cardboard blocking that off. And this is what they look like here. Now the purpose of these with the titanium squawker and titanium tweeter, you get an overlap right between around, I believe it's 6,000 and 7,000 kilohertz, that sound range there, where the phenolic membranes for the mids roll off, I believe around 6,000, whereas the phenolic membrane, I'm sorry, whereas the titanium membranes for the mids roll off around 7,000. And you've got the titanium tweeter that picks up around 6,000. So you do have an overlap and this bandpass filter is gonna go in between the crossover and the mid range and it should help uh, prevent that overlap. So right now I'm gonna be removing the rear passive radiator. So I removed the rear passive radiator and you'll see I do have the Kreitz crossovers currently installed and it's pretty substantial crossover as well. So I'm probably gonna have to take that and see if I can reposition it so that I can add the new bandpass filter in there as well. All right, here's the bandpass filter with the Kreitz crossover for the Forte 2. That's the crossover right there. There's the bandpass filter right there. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be disconnecting the squawker, right here, the squawker wires. And we're gonna be running those over to the squawker here. And we take this, these wires here and run them over to the squawker connection here. And that will put the bandpass filter in between the crossover and the actual squawker. All right, tried to get the camera the best I could so you could see what's going on here. Just had to get something to boost up the bandpass filter with. Make sure you get your black wire on the black lead.
much to check on the tweet and make sure everything's tight. I'll head out, check all my other connections here, make sure they're all in nice and tight. Now we have from here we have our input from our amp that's coming in it's going through the crossover and then we have the output right here to the squawker which is coming to the input on the bandpass and then from the output on the bandpass filter it's going up to the squawker on mid-range and that will should filter out that overlap section from about six to seven kilohertz I understand. Let's take a quick look at that. And of course, just make sure that you match your wires up correctly. So the black is on the black lead, the red's on the red lead. And the same over here. And then we're going to put it all back together. See where I'm going to be able to mount all these inside the speaker. All right, so I have them all mounted in here now. I did have to put the bandpass filter up on the side like that because uh, it just would not fit on the bottom with the large Kreitz crossover in there as well. So that is mounted. I pushed it back more so that it wouldn't interfere with the passive radiator once I put that back in there. And everything's hooked up. Now it's going to seal it back up. Uh, these mount, by the way, with Velcro. Very strong Velcro. So if you look at the bottom of it and the crossover itself is the same. It's uh, very sticky and the Velcro holds very well, so I'm really not that worried about it vibrating off right there. Now I'm just going to put the passive radiator back on and we'll be good to go. All right, and we're back together. Just make sure when you do put that passive radiator back on that the gasket is on appropriately as well because that really helps seal your cabinet which is very important.